and welcome back to part two of the knife collection and this little guy right here I found this this morning when I was digging through everything this is where I did my apprenticeship Waldman Corporation in Parsippany New Jersey Joseph Waldman Corporation and I got to tell you that was a great place to work anyway I'm going to give you a quick look at the table and then we're going to come back and go over some of the mechanisms here because they are rather unique got some folders got some full automatics the stilettos couple of gill hibbit folders, actually one gill hibbit folder, some bucks, more hibbit throwing knives, uh, a stainless and mother of pearl balasong knife, a couple of uh, Columbia Rivers, USA commemorative folding knife right here, I really like that one, survival knives, air grills, going to show you that one up close and personal, that's a nice knife. Someone asked about scuba diving knives. Here we go, right here, these four. This is the one that I carry regularly when I go so I can pry rocks, shells, whatever. And you can see the rest of them are in relatively good condition. Bowie style, the big ones. We've got a Westmark Buffalo Skinner in the back. And then we got the large blade hunting knives here. Funny story on this guy right here. I'll, I'll share that one with you. <laughs> My God. Quite a few of those. No collection is complete without a few buck knives. And I got a very rare one here. It's actually a split handle riveted buck knife, and you don't see too many of those. Some restored older ones. My only knife from Finland. Nice little piece right there, very well balanced. Rigid stiletto fakies. And of course, no collection is complete without. Random, why did you buy that cheapy knives? And we got some stiletto type here. Not fully automatic, but they do look like it. They're definitely not though. More daggers. Got a nice etching on the blade on this one. And this one is a, actually it's a mummy. A couple of inlaid stones and a dagger style point on it. Classic Barlow folding knife. Indian ceremonial knife. Bayonets. Got some beauties here. These are very old. And I guess we'll start this particular segment or end this particular segment. But, uh, right, drum roll, please. Look at this guy. I'll give you three guesses who made this. This blade was an, actually an exercise in diamond polish. This was polished by hand with stones and then worked down through about seven different grits of diamond. And if you're into molds, then you know all about the greens and the blues and the browns and reds and the white diamond polishing. I do not touch the blade on this knife ever. Center is sandblasted. It is pointy, sharp like a razor blade. And to give you some scale, There you go. The black part is in my carta, and believe it or not, the black part is from a Farberware rotisserie handle for like a barbecue grill. Everything else is brass, and the blade is tool steel. It does go all the way through. Screw together pommel. And this was made back in about 1974. The only knife I ever made. Love that knife. Anyway, let's take a closer look at some of the actions and some of the features on this. There is no duplicates on this table from the first go-around, so I guess you can see how large the collection really is. Let's take a closer look. First knife in line is a Gerber folder. This used to have a gut hook on the back, but I'm not a hunter, and I had no need for a gut hook, so I ground it off, reblasted the back side of the blade. It's a nice wooden handle, real nice rigid feel to it. Also, thumb stud opener. Not a fan of thumb stud openers, but that one happened to have one. This is a Gil Hibben folder. Pro folder. And that just says Hibben all over it with that knife, that blade design. Nice heavy sheath for it. Also a liner lock type knife. Nice piece. Standard buck. I pulled this out of a garbage can many years ago. Someone had snapped the tip off. So I reground it and I put a piece of brass in the handle so that it can close and look like it belongs that way. Put 
This has seen a lot of miles that night. A couple of knockoffs down here. But it's just something classic about that brass and walnut look that I really do like. This was picked up at a Harley Davidson shop in Pennsylvania. Shock Harley. Spring Assist Cheapy. But I just like the way it looked. So now it's in my collection. And this just screams Spider Co. knockoff. I know it's not, it's Chinese, but it just looked like it. They like that drop nose thing. Smith & Wesson, I believe this is. This is a M&P, Military and Professional Spring Assist. Just breathe on this thing. <laughs> I mean, you gotta play that in slow motion to even see that. It's got a nice twitch to it when it opens. Real meaty, got a glass breaker on one end in case you gotta get inside of a car. This is designed for uh, business right there. A little pressure pad for your thumb. Nice piece. Another Columbia River knife. This is a Triumph. This is also a professional use knife. Very spring assisted. Just breathe on it and it's open. I just love the way that looks on film. It just blinks and it's there. Another Columbia River textured handle. Carson flipper. Love the flipper on it. Real smooth. Very well made knife. And you can change this uh, belt clip to accommodate however your style is this guy here love this one nice big and those are actually tie downs for anybody that's ever seen it say what's the point if you're going to take and split a tree or a twig or something and stick this down in it these are anchor points for tying it off nice light uh, composite handle this is like a g it almost feels like a g10 laminate it almost looks like it too but I'm not familiar with the color. This is a locking liner lock, so this was absolutely does lock. But by pulling down on the lock release on the back here, at the same time you hit the liner, and then nudge it with the side of your finger, you can close it. But boy, that is quick. Seamless. Beat the death Smith's Army Knife. And just because it says, uh, just because there's a little cross on it that doesn't make it a Swiss Army knife, the Victorinox company was the, I believe they are the sole manufacturer of the authentic Swiss Army knife. But a lot of people have knocked them off. And actually, I believe this is probably a knockoff just sitting on that box. Gil Hibben throwing knives. Love them. They both, they stack in here. Well balanced. I have never thrown it, but I tell you, that is just, love it. I haven't thrown it at anything or anyone. Folding knives, dagger style. Like the look, always have. That is my preferred knife. This guy here is supposed to be the U.S. Army issue Vietnam era pocket knife. How true that is, I do not know. If we have any veterans out there that want to chime in and let me know the actual status of this guy right here, shout it out. Boot knife. Something that you would just slip down inside your boot and pull out on a rainy day for God knows what. Moss Yoke laser cut logo in the blade. I really like this. Not very practical, but a nice, well balanced little knife. Nice sheath. Bear Grylls Gerber. This is a survival knife. I think this is a great knife. It's nice and heavy, got a lot of good features to it. Uh, hammer on the back. This is a whistle for signaling. Good rubber grip. Also tie down spots if you want to tie it to something. The sheath itself has got a sharpening stone in it right there. And the sheath can actually deploy. I'm doing this with one hand so bear with. There's a sharpening stone on the inside of the sheath so there's no reason to have this thing ever get dull. And on the back of the sheath are uh, survival symbols for like being picked up or trying to send rescue or help signals if you need medical attention or whatever. Clever. Nice piece. Scuba diving. Very specific. I'll see if I can get these out of here with one hand. That's not usually the way it goes. With this being lashed around your forearm or the, or your leg, it's a lot easier to get out. These are P 
pinch locks that go through the handle. This is a tank banger in case you're running out of air or you want to get somebody's attention. You take this knife and you reach around the back of your setup and you tap on your air tank and the sound travels a lot farther underwater than it will above water, considerably farther. Another dive knife made by the same manufacturer and it is a Striker, I believe, X Scuba. Hog Cutter X. This is a real handy, real practical dive knife if you are out. It also turns into a cutter. If you find something all tangled up in a net or fishing line and you want to cut it free, go right ahead and do it. This one also has a tank banger on the back. I thought that was pretty novel, had to have it. This one here is from the 70s. This is something that you would have probably seen on Sea Hunt. This is just one of those big monsters. I'm going to go out and defend myself against the shark for all the five seconds before it kills me. Kind of knife. But this is also razor sharp and very mildly serrated. I think you can probably see that on the top edge. Bottom edge is smooth. Top edge is real fine serrations on it. This is my everyday carry when I go scuba diving. This is the one that you will find tied to my BCD. It's got a little mirror on it for signaling. The color is high visibility in case uh, you want to use it as a signaling device underwater. Still got the tank banger on it. And this is good for just about everything. And you can see this has got some use to it. Also a snap lock. Let's get into the big ones. This is a super black Viking knife from Hufford's Cutlery. And these knives are all about 8 inches long. This is a Bowie knife. This is a Bowie knife that I smuggled onto an airplane when I was 15 years old on a trip to the Bahamas and pulled it out in the customs area uh, when the customs agent said, do you have anything to declare? And when I didn't know what it meant, I asked my father what it meant. And he said, well, do you, are you bringing anything in? And I pulled this out of my jacket and I said, like this? And... You should have seen the color rush from his face. That was quite an interesting moment. <laughs> Little crocodile, Dundee style. That ain't a knife. This is a knife kind of knife. That is definitely a serious Bowie knife right there. Another one, stag handle. Classic design. I've got several of those in different sizes just because I like the way they look. And then you've got your obligatory trinket knives on the end. Buck knife. No collection is complete without a buck knife. This is a buck 119. The buck is famous for these fantastic sheaths. This little guy here is a 116. I think this is called a caber. And one of the more unusual bucks in my collection the 124 General. This is unusual such that Buck very rarely splits their handles and uses rivets. And there's a long story behind that. I actually got that before that was released to production and the company did everything in their power to try to get it back. But needless to say, it didn't work out. I was once told this is an old Marine Corps knife but I really can't verify that. The markings have been polished off, which is unfortunate, because if it was, it'd probably be worth something. And I've also done some research and understand that this is a scout knife, a Finland scout knife. That's why the finger guards are so small. It's made for smaller hands. Your obligatory do nothing, they just look cool knives. Eagle heads, throwing knife, Indian ceremonial knife from what I understand. And this guy right here, legend has it, you're not supposed to pull one of these out of the sheath without putting it back in the sheath with blood on it or you'll have bad luck. So you can just imagine what the blade looks like in there. And they do come in two sizes. I think there's a 6 inch and a 12 inch. Stationary stiletto style. Solgen Germany Ornate Dagger. 
I like this piece. And the one next to it is a little cheapo, but it's a skull mummy looking thing. Also a dagger blade. Bayonets. Look at this guy. This is a four-sided square bolt looking. I believe this is very possibly French. Very possibly. Anybody out there knows exactly what these are, by all means, put it in the comment line. I would love to hear your feedback. That blade's about 14 inches long before the handle. And this one is just completely round with a nice little tip ground on the end. And I'm fairly sure that both of these are U.S. issue. All right, let's get inside on the white screen, and I will show you some of the coolest knives that you've probably never seen. Bear with. First one in the unique category is an all stainless split dagger. It's just like a butterfly knife, only instead of going to the side, it goes lengthwise. Very cool little knife. Next one is a very simple, very flat, single-sided knife. And you just push this one to open it. Frame actually indexes, becomes the lock. And around it comes. This guy here is not very expensive. But as you can see, there's something going on in the back here. And when you press this, it becomes a push dagger. Interesting concept. No collection is complete without a com full stainless steel stiletto. This is full auto. It is a 316 stainless steel body, and yes, I did make the body. It was black micarta, phenolic. But because of the wedge design and the construction on the ends, it started to split right here and fail miserably. So yours truly built that handle for it. It's that little knife. Uh, now this is what you've been waiting for, these kind of knives. Watch this. That's a two-hander, this one. Just split it open. There it is. Smith & Wilson Power Glide. If you hit this fast enough, you can make it go away. Same thing on the going out. You have to catch it just right. Bet you've never seen one of those before, huh? Columbia River. To look at this knife, you just can't even begin to imagine how it opens. But very much like you would you would be rolling something in your fingers, you roll this knife against itself. And the one side deploys. And the same way for it to come closed. You see that again? One hander. This is a great little knife. Columbia River. Love that design. That is really cool. Benchmade Infidel. Anybody familiar with Benchmade Infidel knives knows that this is a very expensive knife. Also full automatic. Out and in. And it's got a blade very much like the Sog Desert Dagger, but considerably smaller. It's got a very solid feel to it. Very solid open and close. Another incredibly large aggressive bench made folder is this guy right here. 
watch what happens to the handle when it opens. The blade is definitely about two inches longer than the handle. It is a liner lock knife. And the handle comes back out to accommodate the extra length. Bench made as well. And Kershaw knocked it out of the park with this guy. This is a carabiner knife. Functional carabiner there. And watch the action on this thing. If you pull down on this end, the whole thing just folds out for you. And I think that you can probably see why that got my eye. That has got some great action. If you flick it just right, you can close it automatically. And the same thing with the open. Just give it a flick. If you had to, I would imagine you could probably flick that against your belt or your pants and it would do just fine. But that is not a knife you want to lose concentration on because if your fingers are in there when this thing is closing, it's going to get you. Kershaw. Fantastic.